I broke through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows ekrastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin. I'm Spencer, and today, in honor of Project X, I have a few special guests with me. I have Alexis Knapp on the end. Hello. And Kirby Bliss Blanton. Is yes. that correct? That's correct. Um, and so, before we get to Project X, I want to sort of do a little bit of background on you guys, since you guys are pretty new to the world of film, fresh faces, whatever you want to call it. Um, mm -hmm. Starting with uh, Kirby, you have a, a history in working in TV. Obviously, that's a world of difference from film. What, what is the experience like for you? with working in TV, what what was it like, you know, getting into those shows? I know you did a lot of family-friendly type shows. You did Entourage, too, which was pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, that was but, fun. Um, what was the whole TV experience like for you? TV and film's um, really different. Uh, I kind of have started to really like film just because you completely are involved for something, you know, for maybe two months even at, at times, and you can just focus on that and then go on to this next thing, and it's just... Diff separate entities. Um, with television, you know, hopefully if you're on a show, I mean, I've only done like episodics. I've never been actual cast on a show. But, um, you know, you go in and you're there for like a week or whatever and you get so close to everybody and then you got to go home. So that's what that's what I found in the differences is that I get kind of attached to the television idea and then I have to leave by the time that I've gotten to know everybody and stuff like that. So. But... Would that possibly change if you were, say, the lead on a show? Would you, like, I, embrace that? Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm never going to turn down a show. I mean, that there's always, anytime you get on television, there's the longevity aspect because, I mean, a constant paycheck is something. In our line of work, it comes, it's very rare. So, um, yeah, if, if I was the main cast member, that would be amazing. Any type of show, for sure. And one of the more interesting films on your filmography is the film Scar, which is a... Is it an indie horror film? Yeah. Um, my understanding from looking into it was that it was actually the first entirely shot digitally 3D horror film. Yes. That sounds like a pretty crazy project. What yeah. was that like? It was great. Um, we didn't have to do... The camera already shot everything in 3D, and uh, it was some gruesome stuff that we shot, and I had turned... I turned 16 on that set. So I was really young, and I remember... Um, the last two weeks of filming was all torture scenes. So I was like strapped to a table and being like fake tortured and stuff and having to cry for like two weeks straight. So I, I told myself that I had made it. I was a real actor at that point. <laughs> were, were you a fan of like you say you're 16 and that, that was sort of one of the things that popped in my mind when I saw that because you know you think of like Jamie Lee Curtis and Halloween and stuff like that. What is it like to be you know in the midst of a horror film when you're 16 years old. I mean, obviously, you know, you know it's fake, you're on right. set, whatever. But it's, like, it's gruesome, it's gory, there's a lot of horror in it. Um, well, I was working with uh, Angela Bettis, and she is huge into the horror film. She's got a huge following. She was in May, and uh, also Girl Interrupted. Um, it was funny, when we did the torture stuff, my mom, like, had to watch the monitor, and she was really, like, crying, and she's like, you did such a good job. It just, it seems so real. I didn't want to watch you being oh. tortured and stuff like that. So it, it was fun because, like, you know, I know it's fake, but it was hard to get to a very emotional place and stay there, too. So, like I said, afterwards, I was so proud. I'm like, I'm not doing any more Disney. I'm an actor now. <laughs> and, Alexis, you also, this, I mean, Project X was your first major film. What other sort of roles had you done before then? I saw a lot of smaller roles on your filmography. How did you go about, you know, getting into acting? Because <laughs> if you actually go by, like, the box office yeah. on your filmography, <laughs> like... I don't know, $500 million or something. It's pretty amazing. Um, well, uh, all my life I was training to be a dancer. I was always into the arts. I did ballet. I also learned three instruments and I sang. And I, I stopped all of that when I moved out to L.A. and started modeling because it was the new thing to do, new thing to try. Oh, it's new and interesting. I got sick of that very quickly. Um, and through that world, acting kind of fell into my lap. As a, as a model, I got a job to be a featured extra on Couples Retreat. Mm -hmm. um, it was like more money than I'd been getting. <laughs> and so, because we were getting model rate and it was like a six day shoot or something for us. So I was like, all right, cool, let's do it. Wow. And um, about on like the fifth day of shooting, it was like our ultra featured day. And mm -hmm. um, so they ended up, <laughs> it's so funny. It was my first time on a movie set. Oh, it was, oh, it was cool. <laughs> um, and so uh, we, they put me down next to John Favreau, who was um, 
doing a scene with Alyssa, who I was, me and two, I think, other girls were playing her friends. We didn't have any lines, you know, featured extras. Um, and from there, you know, I was just pantomiming to the girl over there, blah, 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 while they're doing their scene. And then they ended up, uh, John would turn to me and, and start, like, conversing with me, and I would just be like, mm-hmm. Yeah, like, you know, didn't say anything. He wasn't trying to fuck up the scene. I, I didn't want to, you know, mess it up. Oops, sorry. And uh, you can say whatever you want. Okay, good. I, not, 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 no. yeah. All right, yeah. I forgot if this was one of those no profanity ones. My bad. Oh no, no, no. Okay, no. cool. Fuck, fuck, fuck. So, I'm um, just getting that out of my system. So, uh, so then, um, you know, he kept it, blah, 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 and I was like. Oh, it, so eventually I asked a question after a bunch of scenes because they kept saying, you know, don't be a bitch, you know, turn to him and, and yeah, like respond to him and stuff. I was like, all right, cool. And so I like, you know, gave him the time of day kind of thing and then uh, still wasn't sure if I should talk or not. So he would ask me questions and I was like, should I answer you? So then I asked um, uh, Peter, the director, I was like, I'm sorry, Peter. I was like, do you want me to actually answer him when he's speaking to me with my mouth like verbally I was like I don't know if and then they're all like I don't know can she talk I don't know should she speak and then they're like yeah go ahead just improv it out and I was like all right and so we were improving for like an hour and it was wow. so fun so 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 fun and then they brought in the I don't know if you see the movie um it's a hilarious film they they were the the yoga teacher he comes in <laughs> so they bring him and they don't even pe- keep this in the film I thought maybe they but it was so funny what we were doing me Alyssa and this guy were just improving the whole time and he was doing his character like oh girl you're so sexy we're just like oh da, da, da. I don't know but it was hilarious and that was the moment where I realized wow um this is not as hard as I thought it was gonna be it comes pretty naturally and it's so fun and that's when I kind of fell in love with acting well, it's, it's I mean you have a very sort of unique experience I mean granted the roles weren't massive at that point but like that and was it a uh, Percy Jackson, Jackson yeah. yeah like you worked with cast that were like so loaded with talent that yeah. I mean, that had to be a pretty amazing learning experience for someone who's just getting into acting. Totally. And still at the time when I did Percy Jackson, I was still just modeling. I had never taken acting classes and I, I got lucky. I got another, I got a role to play one of Aphrodite's daughters. And we were originally were supposed to have, um, we were supposed to have lines and I, they got, they ended up cutting, cutting everything. And so you barely, you see me for about three seconds in the film. But um, I was in Vancouver for like like three weeks, which was amazing. I love that city. And um, I still wasn't really serious about acting. I still was just kind of floating around, making money, doing modeling, didn't really care. Um, and then I, a friend of mine uh, asked me if I wanted to read and put myself on tape. He, I had worked with him before, like in a modeling thing, and he was being a first AD for um, Dr. Limptooth, which you also see on my IMDb, oh, which God. is a vampire comedy. It's so funny. They're still like working and getting in fe- fe- uh, festivals and stuff now, but but that was kind of my first film where I did a role and I played, um, I ended up becoming a vampire and it was super fun. We shot in Utah for a while and, um, but I still didn't really care about the acting thing until I got introduced to my agent, my manager who then brought me over at CAA and they were all so excited and we just had all these meetings and then I just kind of was like, all right, I'm down. Let's do this. Let's just, this is all in. I'm done modeling. And then shortly after Project X came. So I was very, very lucky in how I got into acting and yeah, how it I mean, all played it's, out. It's, it's good that you bring up Project X, which is why you guys are here. Yeah. <laughs> March 2nd. Uh-huh. Um, Project X is uh, obviously a massive film, and you two happen to be basically the the females of significance in this movie. I mean, obviously there are a lot of women in the movie. There's a lot of featured extras in right. it. They get a lot of screen time. It's great for them. Kirby, I guess you would probably be the role of the most... Um, screen presence if it were what is what is it like being you know the girl next door have to be sort of the the relatable one in the cast that people are sort of rooting for ultimately that was easy um no i uh it was really fun because the boys and i all got along and um thomas and i were good buddies so we could totally work on our chemistry i don't know it was a lot of fun um, I'm kind of a tomboy, so that part came easily to me. Like playing the video games, doing all of that stuff was easy. So, um, the girl next door thing is kind of, I guess, um, you know, I didn't get to do as much fun stuff because I, I kind of have to, I kind of have to be like the friend. But um, it was still, I mean, we had a great time. So I got to curse and do all that fun stuff. <laughs> uh, I had a wet t-shirt scene. That was a big deal for me, I guess. So yeah, I mean, it was really, it was a really good time. And yeah, you do kind of root for her and you want. Her and Thomas to end up together, and you think that you know 
they were best friends and when they're kissed. I don't know. Everyone cause has, if you haven't had a situation like that, you know of one because there's always that friend that you've either liked or wanted to like and didn't want to cross the boundary. I don't know. I just feel like everyone can relate to that. And in regards to you, Alexis, I, I mean, it's sort of weird to think about, but for me, it was something that occurred in my mind. In some ways, this movie's almost like a silent film in the sense that a lot of what is conveyed in the movie is conveyed through action and not words, particularly for your character. I mean, you don't really actually have that many lines of dialogue. What is it like to try and sort of be a role that you have to sort of do it all through your acting? Like, that's like true acting, not just reciting lines, but actually acting everything out. What is that challenge like for somebody who's a relatively new actress, too? Um, well, that's not how it was in the beginning because this role was supposed to be technically like the female lead. But then when I saw the movie actually come out, it kind of Kirby's like the female lead because she has more of the the lines and the scenes and stuff. So I saw that they they in the beginning they they had me improving a lot more, and I was doing a lot of like um, more bringing my own personality to it. Uh, I was cursing out the boys when you know and there were, I had a lot more lines but they ended I think they went a different route trying to make my character more mysterious um, and and so it was it wasn't I, I don't know I guess because we didn't film it all like that where where everything was done with action you know and instead of words they just decided to cut it that way um, there's also times where we didn't know the camera was on us like there's two cameras there's oh, a yeah. and a B camera they gave us so a lot of freedom all they was us dancing or talking to our friends so that was all real action it wasn't you know it wasn't contrived at all uh kirby you know you you play you know the friend that's there for him and whatnot what is it like you know sort of working in that found footage concept i mean it seems to go through waves in hollywood where it's like it's all the rage and it's gone how do you think this affected this film because you know in terms of party films it's like animal house or you know can't hardly wait something like that how did the element of the uh, found footage change what you guys were doing I think that makes the movie um, not only do you feel like you're a part of the party and you feel like you're there but it also makes it very like it feels very intimate as if you're getting to watch these kids lives and kind of get a peek into their you know their perspective um, yeah, there are per party movies that have been done before, but not only is this on such a huge scale, but we also have it as if, you know, your the perspective is different because you do feel like you're just kind of watching from afar and that they're unaware that we're there, you know, so you feel like you're kind of in on it. And Alexis, you, uh, Kirby had to be a little bit toned down because they're keeping her sort of image in the girl next door kind of vibe, even though, you know, there is some little bit of rushiness. Um, but you, you really, you really were featured in terms of the the chaos in the party what was that like you again as sort of a new actress to be sort of you know, thrown this this script and be like this is what we want you to do because i mean i guess you have to think about your entire career and how everything affects what you do well i had um uh, well, for one, they put me in this little black dress, which was very pretty, but I, I don't know. Um, I don't normally, but at the time, I, I, I don't really, I never got glammed up for anything. So, I mean, that was very different to be in heels all the time and to be constantly being perceived as the popular hot chick. That's not who I was in, in school whatsoever. I was like kind of an outcast. I didn't really have that many friends. The friends that I did have were very, very close, but I mean, I pretty much hated my school. They were all kind of assholes. Um, but so it, it was definitely a character that I had to embody. And so I just kind of thought about the girls that I used to hate a little bit <laughs> and tried to do that. And, you know, I did have a little, um, like, moral complications with doing the the one scene where I hook up with Thomas but um, looking at it after the film um, I don't regret doing it at all it looks great and I'm just excited for when I'm older and this body does not look like that anymore I'll be like yay it was documented it's not always it was saggy you know well, you, you mentioned a good point that I was actually thinking of you know while watching this movie what was it like you said this was not who you were in high school how about no. you uh, what, were you a girl next door in high school or did you go? Uh, I started doing this when I was like 15, so I got my GED. Um, but uh, in high school, nobody really gave a shit about me. Yeah, I wasn't the popular girl. I wasn't the nerd. I didn't get like bullied or anything. But uh, I, I definitely bullied. was in my own little world. I didn't care what anybody thought about me. My stepdad was an eye doctor, and most of the day, most days, I would wear scrubs to school, and people thought I was a weirdo. 
And in terms of the logistics of making this film, obviously it gives the experience of a gigantic, massive party. What was the actual filming like? Because was it a massive party basically every day that they just had cameras roving through? Or like how exactly did that work? It was, it was a lot more organized than you would think it would be. I mean, there was, you know, they like a normal movie, action and cut and all that good stuff. Um, but I mean, the energy of the extras was impressive. They were on like 24-7. It was really, really good. But I mean, we were working with such great people. They knew how to amp us up. They knew how to calm us down when we needed to be. Um, but I mean, nobody was actually doing drugs or drinking or any of that stuff. Some people was assume that we were, it's kind of funny <laughs> that they think that that's all right to do in the workplace, especially with a lot of underagers. I was underage. Kirby was. What's underage? Do you mean for drinking? For drinking, yeah. Yeah. We were underage. Yeah, for sure. But I don't know. It was funny. We had over like 200 and 300 extras at one point. So it did feel like a party, even if, you know, we weren't actually working at that time because there's still, you know, we're all so excited to be there and they're extremely excited to be there. You know, they were so hard on this movie because we get kind of the glamorous job and they have to bottom line I'm glad because they were really featured in this so I feel like when they get to watch it they're going to be like oh my god I remember that or there I am or whatever so I think the extras are just a big a big part of the film as well and they have you know little characters as well in the film and you sort of both have touched on it in various aspects the final product is a fun film but what is it like you know compared to what you imagined it would be why don't we start with Alexis um, well, I, when I imagined it, um, I kind of imagined it more like a super bad. And when I finally saw it, I couldn't believe how much funnier it actually was, in my opinion, and how much crazier, like the way that it all gets cut in the very end, like, oh my God, it just builds and builds and builds. I was, it just exceeded my expectations at like crazy. I was so impressed, so proud, so honored to be a part of it. Yeah, visually, um, you know, we knew going into it that it, our, the director, Nemo, is really good with music videos. He's done a lot of that. And uh, we knew that he was going to bring something special to the table. But honestly, you can't really expect, you can't, I could never prepare myself for, for this film, you know, because once you see it, it's just, it's even more than everything that we expected. And yeah, we're very proud of it. We're really proud. We worked hard. And not only that, but it looks phenomenal. So, Yeah. And now that you guys have both starred in a major film, what do you have next? Uh, why don't we start with Alexis again? Uh, I have a film coming out that's called So Undercover. Um, I shot that about a year ago. It stars Miley Cyrus and Jeremy Piven. It revolves around a sorority house where Miley got hired by the FBI to watch out on a sorority sister whose father is in the mafia, and she's kind of got a hit on him. And I play that girl's roommate, and that's just a really fun Fun, fun movie. Um, really funny, too. It's a great film. And then I have uh, Pitch Perfect that I just was in uh, Baton Rouge filming for the past three months in the fall and winter. Um, that's a musical comedy. Uh, we had four weeks of rehearsal, singing and dancing. It was awesome. And like I told you before, I used to sing and dance, so it was just so rewarding to be able to utilize my past skills and to this new job for me. And that's another reason why acting is so wonderful for me, because I can just take on all these other different aspects of who you are and what you've been doing. But uh, Pitch Perfect, that stars, um, mm, uh, oh, I said Miley again. <laughs> uh, that stars uh, Brittany Snow, Anna Kendrick, Anna Camp. Esther Dean's in it. She's uh, She writes music and she's an artist. She's awesome. Adam Devine, uh, myself, and that's, that's going to be, that's going to be awesome. Really excited for that to come out in the summer. I did a show called The Inbetweeners that's uh, big in the UK. And we're doing it for MTV. I'm not going to list the whole cast. Um, I also did a uh, movie with the Polish brothers. It's a comedy. It's called Hotbot, and it's basically revolving around um, a sex robot. So that's funny. And a quick question about the in-betweeners, because that's, I mean, it's the latest British import to America. Right. Are, are you familiar with, do you sort of look at the past shows that have yeah, done like it? Yeah, the what, what do you feel about, like, you know, responsibility in terms of, like, come bringing it over? Because there's been sort of hits and misses. That's in terms what I was going to say. Yeah, it's either, it's either a hit or a miss. You know, I really want to do the Brits proud. I know how in love they are with this show and with the cast. We're not trying to, you know, take anything away from that. We're just trying to recreate it for the Americans so that I, I've watched the whole season of the UK version, and it's hilarious. We're not going to be able to curse as much and say, you know, bloody hell or whatever, because anything that they, they say is hilarious. But uh, 
ours is pretty raunchy and it's funny and it'll be on MTV, so it'll still be great. But we, you know, we're just trying to do like a similar thing. It's never going to be as epic as the UK version because that was first. So we're trying to do a similar thing in our own way and the boys are really funny. So, you know, I think, I think it'll do well. I think that if the UK people don't love it, I think the Americans, you know, will totally get it. So, and you know, that's who we're trying to, you know, impress and entertain. Yeah, that should be a pretty interesting project. Um, so, got your future projects. What websites, Twitters, anywhere can people find out more information about you guys? Why don't we start with you, Kirby? Um, I, I don't really have a fan site. I, uh, I have a Twitter, Kirby B. Blanton, at Kirby B. Blanton. And then, um, yeah, I think you can do fan mail to my agent and stuff on IMDb. If I don't know. Hmm. I also have a Twitter <laughs> at Alexis Knapp, no spaces, and uh, I have a Facebook fan page my manager made for me. It's just my name. Uh, no website yet. I still haven't really come around to get into it. Maybe if I have a desire, I don't know, if there's a calling for it. Who knows? I think you're covering the important bases at this point. Um, thank you guys so much. Uh, I wish you guys luck with Project X and future projects. And again, you can check out more interviews at MacGuffinPodcast.com. And we will see you next time. Thanks. Thank you. Magazzi can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to buy the sound style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.